welcome to another episode. I'm here with Leah Zilliak. <laughs> and I'm still in Bansko today talking to digital nomads about what they do and how they started because Bansko is a big digital nomad hub. And so why did you come to Bansko? I came to Bansko for Nomad Fest a couple of months ago and then just ended up staying. So. <laughs> and what is Nomad Fest for people who don't know? Nomad Fest is um, held here in Bansko. It's the second year, I believe. It's hosted by Coworking Bansko, so it's kind of a celebration of the digital nomad lifestyle. So it brought in people who were interested in being digital nomads or already are and wanted to learn some more things. So um, yeah, it was a week long, week long event. Great. What was your highlight? Highlights. Uh, there were lots of events all around town. So we went white water rafting one day through the the events um, that they had scheduled through the day. They have speakers, which are some really great ones there. Um, bonfires, pool parties, all those sorts of things. Wow. So, yeah. yeah, I'm definitely <laughs> going to have to come to that next year. For sure, yeah. Really missed out. So how long have you been a digital nomad? Presumably you are a digital nomad. Yes, yes, uh, for three years now. Wow, well, okay. Yep. And how did that journey go? Like, How did you get into it originally? Yeah, so I <laughs> started, a, I worked in the music business for many years and I kind of got burned out on that and I worked on cruise ships for a few years after that as an entertainment host on board and I think kind of caught the travel bug there and decided I wanted to see more of the world and uh, yeah, left ships and started doing the nomad thing. So. And so how do you, presumably you work while you're being a nomad? Yes, so I do consulting work for co-living spaces now. So travel around to co-living spaces I'm, I'm in charge of guest experience is kind of my thing so uh, yeah work with spaces around the world so I think so, something a lot of people that want to become a digital nomad want to know is how you got from the standard nine to five job or cruise ship job into yep. being able to be a digital nomad did you start your did you start as a side hustle and do that or did you uh, do you have an employer now or is it your own business or how did that work yeah so a combination of things i guess when i first started i just started traveling because i wanted to and kind of met came across the digital nomad scene i first went to lisbon um, on a trip by myself so you had I, savings or something or? yep yep had saved up money and so i was able to travel for a little bit and then i fell into the nomad scene and kind of discovered that i could keep traveling if i was able to do some work so i picked up some freelance work in social media marketing for a little bit and then eventually started my own business doing the consulting work I so, do now. So. so how did you pick up that freelance work? You'd already done that in a job and you had contacts or? Yep, a little bit. I had done some, some social media marketing in um, the music business, with lots of different things. But yeah, I just kind of started asking around for feelers and, and got some random work doing that. And then that kind of just gave me enough cushion to continue working on what I wanted to do and then start running the business. So that was through contacts basically? Yes, yep. Great. And so what is it so you mentioned that you do you're a co-living consultant now. Yes. What does that mean? I work specifically with co-living spaces, so I help them build communities and strengthen their processes so that they can have a better guest experience in general. Okay, as somebody who doesn't really understand this, what does that mean on a kind of a day-to-day -day level? Like what you wake up in the morning, you answer emails or you yep. speak to people or it depends. I have several different clients that I work with so for some of them it's just a one-off session that I'm working with them remotely um, I have another company that I work for in the UK and I do more of the day-to-day -day stuff with them so yes it's emails it is organizing things it's chatting on the phone with people meetings all those sorts of things so um, yeah most of it can be done remotely I like to work on site too which is better but travel kind of prohibits that a little bit so um, yeah a little bit of everything, I guess. Okay, I, 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 I'm a bit of a moron, <laughs> so so I can understand this better. Yeah. Can you give me? It could be a hypothetical example or a real example. You don't have to mention any names. Yep. Of exactly what people ask of you and what you'd do for them, for you know, as an example. Yes. So, my background is in the hospitality business, and so I guess when I first started traveling, I was visiting co-living spaces and noticing that there were some things that we were doing in the hospitality business that weren't really being so done. So what is a co what's an example of a co-living space? Because I, I think a lot of people haven't really come yeah. across those before. I haven't that much, to be honest. No, okay. I'm kind um, of in one now, maybe. But. Oh, gosh. Well, yes, yeah, so we're at co-working events, so this yeah. is a co-working version of co-living, I guess. Uh, but yeah, there are co-living spaces around the world, and a lot of them are focused on digital nomads, so they are community-based. So it's a way for solo travelers to kind of connect as a community so you can co-work throughout the day and then at night there are usually events and activities and those sorts of things to kind of bring the community together so yeah 
So it's like a co-working space, mm -hmm. but you also live there. So Correct. the idea is you do, so the whole point of a co-working space is often that you can meet people doing similar things. Yep. So you're just kind of extending that idea um, to just living in the same place as well. So it's more, Correct. I guess it's convenient, but also there's even more of a community potentially. Correct, so sometimes it'll be one big building, sometimes it'll be an apartment. Um, but yes, in general, there's a co-working aspect of it, a co-working space and then there's a co-living cool part of it, so you can live and work together at the same time. Interesting, so wh yeah. where have been the best co-living spaces that you've seen? I mean, presumably you've stayed yeah. in some yourself? Yep, I have. Um, so there are lots of different types of co-living, the kind that we're talking about for nomads. Um, they're kind of spread throughout the world, but I always say Sun & Co in Javia, Spain is Sun a really great one. Sun & Co, yes. Interesting. Um, there's Sun Desk in Tagazut, Morocco. I've done some work with them before. Um, all across Europe, there are smaller ones that are kind of geared toward digital nomads here. And Vensco is co-working Vensco, and there are some co-living spaces here as well, but um, they do the community thing really well here as a co-working space. Um, so yeah, there are lots of, lots of them. <laughs> and so what have you done for some of these places as an example? Yeah, so I kind of go through their whole guest experience from start to finish. So this so. would be after they've set up or before they set up or both? It can be both. I prefer to work after they've already set up. so it'll be uh, going through the customer journey from start to finish. So going through their onboarding process and their living experience and the offboarding process as well and figuring out their event schedule, how they want to build community, those sorts of things. So wow. going through and streamlining the whole experience. This seems like, did you invent this job? <laughs> or? <laughs> I kind of did, I kind of did. Um, I mean, I had done similar things in hospitality before. Um, but as far as being a consultant for co-living spaces, it wasn't really a thing when I started. Now there, there are some more people doing it now, but I think there's room for consultants in every sort of yeah, business. Yeah, no, I mean, but, it makes uh, sense. Yeah. So you've really crea just created, you, you, you said, I want this job. You've created the actual whole job category and now yep. that's what you're doing. Yep. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. That's really cool. Um, so what are your thoughts on Bansko then? Thoughts on Bansko? Yeah, I came here for Nomad Fest, but also because I had heard so much about Bansko and the community that they had here. And it's just, it's super impressive that we're in this mountain town that's kind of in the middle of nowhere, but it draws in nomads from all over the world because their community is super strong. So yeah, it's been really interesting to see. I'm just checking the map here to make sure we're walking in the right <laughs> direction. Um, so you, have you been to any other of the, you know, traditional, if that's the right word, digital nomad hubs around the world? Um, let's see, where have I been? I guess I've been to Medellin, Colombia. That's a yeah, that's supposed to be a good one, isn't it? Yep, I really want to get to Tbilisi. That yeah, Tbilisi seems is to be cool. where everybody goes from here. Um, where else have I been? Lisbon. I spent a lot of time there. There are lots of nomads there. So yeah. How does it compare here to those places, would you say? I mean, it's, it's quite small here, isn't it? Yeah, it's a different vibe here because it is small town and um, it's, it's interesting to see you kind of get to know everybody really, really quickly and it's a smaller community which means you know you bump into people yeah yeah just randomly it feels like a small town kind of kind of vibe which is different than the cities that you kind of have to work more at I guess to find those connections and here it's just everywhere so yeah. so are you consulting any co-living spaces here no I'm not um, nothing here I just came to kind of check out the vibe and see what was happening but uh, yeah, it's interesting. I mean, see. are there any co-living spaces in Vance Collection? There are. Um, there's Four Leaf Clover and there's Avalon. Um, and then they're actually going to start a co-living space with co-working Vansco also, which isn't open Who yet, is? but will be. Co-working Vansco. Oh, they're going to start one themselves. Yep. Okay, we're interested. Yep. So I think there's there's definitely room for it because there's so many co-working spaces here in this little town. So co-working yeah, is kind of the next step. Kind of so. perfect. So have you seen the um, WeWork documentary? No, I Cause, haven't. Cause they, I don't know if you know, they started a yep. co-living space in New York. Yep. Do you have any opinions on that? Um, uh, there's so many different types of co-living. Co I prefer the smaller ones because it feels like the communities are more authentic and more meaningful. Um, there are a lot of the high-rise spaces like the Collective in London and the Common and Ollie and some of those bigger ones in the US as well. So you're saying um, billions of dollars of venture capital funding stop it having a nice, friendly family atmosphere. Yeah, yeah, it's great. I mean, it's all about community and some of them are able to do it in an authentic way, which is awesome. Uh, but it's all about what you're looking for in a community. For the digital nomads, I think it's usually on a smaller scale because it's a smaller group of people, but more travel focused. Um, 
with a similar demographic. So that's yeah. super great and building community. But um, yeah, there's just so many different types of co-living happening right now. It's a big, big trend for sure. So what would you say are like the top five most important things for a, a digital nomad co-living uh, setup? Yeah, I guess a strong co-working space, um, great internet, super important, of course. Yeah. Um, a location that is inexpensive tends to be where digital nomads go, or at least more affordable. Um, and community. Community is the key thing. Having events and having a place for people to come together is super important. Yeah, co-working van sky seems really good for the community side of yep. things. They're very proactive. Yeah. And uh, Matthias is always nagging people to go to lunch <laughs> and go to do everything, which is great. Yeah, for sure. Because, um, yeah, other co-working places I've been, they're not all so good on that. Yep. And, you know, so maybe some people want that. Maybe they just want to get on with the work and go home. Yeah. Um, but that's not so much. I guess with the, the, that doesn't exist with co-living. If someone's co-living, they really do want the community, I suppose. Then that's why they're doing it. Exactly. And yeah, co-living, co I kind of, as a personal choice, I travel. I'll stay by myself in Airbnbs for a little bit and then do, do co-living for a little bit because you kind of crave that sense of community when you're traveling by yourself and co-living offers that. And what they're doing here is co-working, but it's still very much a community like I've seen in other co-living spaces. So it's very interesting to see that you can still just do co-working and have that same level of community. Well, it's just a small step for them to become co-living now, isn't yeah, it? Because they've yeah, already got is. a lot of that in place. Yep. So what, what are the best co-living spaces you've stayed in in the world, would you say? Um, yeah, like I mentioned, Sun & Co, Sun oh, yeah. Desk, those are kind of the top, my two, top two favorites, but there are a ton. Um, Nine co-living in Tenerife is really great. Um, there are a lot of, a lot of them spread throughout Europe. Yeah, I, I never realized there were so many. Yeah, yeah. How would you even find out about them? Is, is there like a, a website that lists them all? Like there Hostel World? Is, um, I'm not sure. I know there's one called Kindred um, that has a, all the co-living spaces there. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you just search co-living spaces, digital nomads, you'll come up with, with the top lists there. Right. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> okay. Is there anything else you'd like to? Uh, if people want to know more about you, where would they? Where should they check you out or check out your consultancy? Yeah. Um, CoLivingConsultant.com or CoLivingConsultants on Instagram, LinkedIn, all those sorts of things. You can find me there. Brilliant. Okay. Thanks a lot, Leah. Yeah. And I'll see you guys on the road.